Venus is commonly considered to be the hottest planet in the solar system, but it's by choosing a specific level in that planet that we come up with that answer. If we looked at the interior of a planet like Jupiter, Jupiter would be hotter. It would be something like 40,000 degrees in the center of that planet, as far as we know. And the Earth at its center is maybe 4,000. Venus is probably something similar to Earth. If we look at the very outside of a planet and try to determine its surface, then we run into problems. If a planet is absolutely rock and has no atmosphere left, all of its, at all of its atmosphere has escaped or been incorporated back into the crust which is what happens with very small, rocky bodies, then we have a place we can delineate as the surface, where a solid meets vacuum. We can say with relative certainty that the planet has a surface, and we can see what it is. When we deal with something made entirely of liquid and or gas, like the Sun or Jupiter, then we run into more problems in saying where the surface is. The surface becomes rather an arbitrary choice. Even on Earth, this holds because we have an atmosphere, and the atmosphere gets thinner and thinner as we go up towards space. The atmosphere really is part of Earth. So where do we say exactly where the atmosphere ends and outer space begins? This is important for determining what the surface temperature of the planet is, because if we consider the outside of the atmosphere as the surface, Earth would be a very hot place indeed. Earth has a relatively high percentage of gases like oxygen and nitrogen that absorb a little bit of the incoming solar energy and warm up as a result. So the higher up you go toward the sun, the hotter you get. And there's also a very thin concentration of these gases and very much solar radiation to go around. So what you get at the very outer reaches of the Earth's atmosphere is a temperature that can be a thousand degrees Celsius or more, especially during solar flares. By that measurement, Earth is actually the hottest planet in the solar system. It also has another layer farther down of other gases that absorb the incoming sunlight, which is the ozone layer. So you get a little bit of warmth there too. Earth is a dual system then, because one way, the closer you get to the sun, the warmer you are. But the other way, the closer you get to the Earth, the warmer you are. Because the Earth has influences of its own, largely gravitational that keep the bottom of the atmosphere warm. The way that gases are heated by radiation in the Earth's atmosphere then contradicts the presumed knowledge having to do with the supposed greenhouse effect in almost every respect. The gases which heat the most are heated by incoming solar radiation rather than outgoing longwave radiation from the Earth. These gases are oxygen and nitrogen, not carbon dioxide because carbon dioxide is most abundant in the lowermost levels of the atmosphere, it doesn't reach to the ionosphere and the levels where the highest temperatures occur. Also, the highest temperatures of gases occur where their concentrations are the lowest. The idea of the greenhouse effect scare is that if you increase the concentration of the absorbing gas, put more, more molecules out there to catch the radiation, that you'll get this enhanced warming. But the warmest places, created by gases absorbing radiation, are where the gases are the thinnest. The initial response you get is from only the first handful of molecules, and if you add in more molecules, then the radiation spread more among them. The way you can get a higher temperature with a greater concentration or a greater mass of gas is by pressurizing the gas, but that's not the effect that's under discussion in terms of putting carbon into the atmosphere. If we could increase the mass of gas in the atmosphere, we could warm the Earth. But the gas we added would have to be something relatively inert and abundant in the atmosphere, perhaps nitrogen.